Okay, let's get started. I'm going to do a brief kind of thing on PHP to let you know its capabilities and how it works with MySQL. Uh, the examples that I'm going to go over and the files that I'm looking at right now are here. PHP 1. I'm probably not going to cover PHP 2. I'm just going to go over PHP 1, which is a PowerPoint. And I want to refresh your memory and show you these database example files. Uh, that I showed you last time, but some people weren't here, so I'll review a little bit on that. So if you want to see this work in action, you would download the database example files. It's a zip file. You would extract that file out, and you're going to load it up in uh, XIMPP. I have to turn my servers on, actually. Let me start my servers up. Make sure your database server, your MySQL database server is running, and your Apache web server is running. And we're going to see PHP work. Hopefully, we'll see what happens here. Uh, oh, okay, both of them are working. Now, if I go into the folder, open the application folder, and I look at htdocs, I've put those files in here. And the files that I put in here were from the zipped file that I downloaded from the Canvas website. There's form.php, there's database.php, form.html, and insert. Dot PHP. And if I remember, we were looking at these last time. Ooh, it looks like I even changed it. Oh, yes, I do remember. We were looking at it last time and I changed it. I'm going to download this again then because my files are different. I edited those files. So let me download the zip file and uh, load them back in here fresh uh, because the ones I have in here changed from the last time I worked with it. So I took these files here and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna replace them all. Probably could have just done grabbed them all at the same time but Oh, now I know why I had the door shut before. <laughs> I can hear the music. <laughs> I'd rather have the fresh air right now, though. Um, all right, so if I load up form, ah, oh, there we go, that's what I was looking for. Remember this little input form we were looking at? We're going to look at how to create this in a few minutes. And uh, let me load it, though, from the, from the local host. If I load it from the local host, you notice I'm running it from localhost forward slash form to HTML. And the way this works is I'm going to put my name in here. Actually, I'm going to put another name. I'm going to put Sophia University in here. And I'm going to put, oh, this is uh, first name. I'll put, this, I'll put last name as University. And then uh, email address, I'm going to put uh, Sophia at sophia.edu. Yeah, and I'm just putting garbage in there. It says input data succeeded. If I go to my XAMPP and I look at, uh, I go into the application, uh, go into, go to applications, and I go into my PHP admin. Last time, what we did was we created this table under test, and the table in here uh, had my guess, and my guess, uh, so now it has Sophia University in here, and it looks like I emptied, it looks like I put in one, two, three three empty rows in here. So I'm going to clean this up here. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to delete from my guess where the first name is equal to nothing. Run it. And then now I'm going to look at it, and now I see I have Barbara Hecker, Peter Pan, Marianne, Lewis, Frankenstein. I don't know why I put that one in there. And then the one I just added, Sophia University. So I use the web form. Uh, let's go back to the web form. Oh, I'm in the web form. Let me open up another window. This form here. Let me put another one in here so we can see. I'm going to put Donald Duck in here. Donald Duck is in here. He's at DD Duck at Sophia Dyke University. Yeah? Ah, how did I get to that form? Good question. 
go into your web browser and type in localhost forward slash form dot php but do that after you copy the database.zip files into the htdocs folder. So htdocs has this form dot html. If I just run the form I'm not running it from the server. PHP is a server-side scripting language so it has to actually be run from the server. If I run it from the server, it'll bring up the form, and then in the form, here, I'm typing in the information. If I go back, I could put in, uh, let's put, uh, who's the other guy? Uh, Popeye. Popeye Sailor. I'll give him, uh, I probably misspelled his name, it's okay. Pop, Popeye, Popeye. Alright, we'll just do that. So after I enter those names, and if I come over here and I refresh it, or just hit click on the browser again, you see now I have uh, Popeye the Sailor, Donald Duck in here too. So I'm able to add data to my database without using my PHP admin, PHP my admin. I'm able to just use the form. So because what you're not going to do is give your end users access to PHP my admin, you're going to create a website probably and have a form on there, maybe for a guest book or something, and then you're going to have the users enter the data in. So that the way this application works is that, and I, if I open form.html up with a text editor, I'll open it up in text wrangler, I have HTML code. We're not going to learn HTML. We have to take a web development class if you want to kind of get into HTML. Um, and PHP, but HTML is running this form.php file. Form.php file from a, it's actually from the submit button on this form. And the form looks like this and this says send on it. This submit button is what's sending it. So if I hit it like three times, which I just did, I'm going to have Popeye in there about three times. Uh, let's go back. I just put him in three times, one, two, three. <laughs> so he's, he's in there a lot now because I just hit submit a couple of times. Um, but this is the HTML form running form.php. Uh, form.php is the PHP code. And what I wanted to do is sort of talk about PHP today. Uh, so here's form.php. If I double click on form.php, it just brings it up into a text editor. And what's in here are some simple lines. It's pulling the first name, last name, and email address from the form that was uh, that called this script. And I went through this last time actually. It's from a post and a get through HTTP protocol. And uh, this is the interesting part here. It's running a MySQL connect command with localhost root. And XAMPP doesn't have a password. It's empty for root unless you put one in. I didn't put one in. It's selecting the database test. Well, that is this database here, test, and we're using table my guess. So it's putting in a test here as the database, and then the query is going into my guess. So here's a query. It says uh, insert into my guess, first name, last name, email, values, and the values are going to be the values that I've taken from the form. The first name, and last name, and the email address. That's how I'm getting Donald Duck and Popeye and those those guys in there. And then running in a MySQL underscore query on the query to run the query. And then this is just printing out a results if it was successful or not successful. We could redirect it to go back to the farm if we wanted to, or have some other behavior occur. So what I want to do is kind of talk about well, how in the world do you go about creating this code, and what are some of the code syntaxes for this? Um, because PHP is probably one of the most popular programming languages, scripting languages, to use with MySQL. And because we looked at MySQL in this class, the next sequence, usually in courses that you want to take, is some web development class. Um, so you can create a guest book, a shopping cart, um, a bunch of different functionality in PHP to be used from a web form. And then the information would go into a database, so you could keep track of what customers purchased what, um, the inventory of the items. In fact, you can actually take, put product in a MySQL table, 
run a query on it, show it on the screen, and say, hey, I have five of these in stock, or I have none of these in stock, um, and keep track of how many things got sold and stuff. Uh, so as an application from a business application perspective, PHP is a nice little tool to work along with MySQL. It's most popularly used that way. If you go into one of those um, like Dreamweaver or one of those what you see is what you get kind of web development tools, PHP is the language underneath it. The only thing different with that is that it's creating more code. PHP is a little bit slimmer. It, it only gives you like what you need. And we'll see in a few minutes how that accomplished. So. So this one is called PHP 1, and uh, it's a fairly simple little lecture. We'll just cover this one. Uh, what does it stand for? That's a good question. <laughs> what is this PHP thing? It stands for, PHP stands for PHP colon. So the word PHP is actually in the name. It's sort of a recursive name. The name is the definition of the name. It's hypertext preprocessor. Huh. Okay. That's where the H is the hypertext and the P is preprocessor. So PHP is PHP hypertext preprocessor. Huh. Hypertext. It works with HTML. <laughs> it is a text language. It's a scripting language. It's preprocessed in a server in Apache. So which is why you have to load up your Apache server and then you load for MySQL. And then right in there is PHP. So XAMPP is actually stand, stands for cross-platform Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl. I'm not going to look at Perl. Perl's kind of an older scripting language. If we were going to... Huh? What is hypertext? Hypertext is... Um, hypertext. It's text plus. It's more than just text. It's text plus statements or text plus commands. So text. Let me show you an example of that, actually. Uh, hypertext. HTML is a um, hypertext markup language where, actually that's a good way of putting it, where you have tags and elements and those tags and elements um, those tags and elements become part of the language. In PHP you have tags and elements that become part of that language. So it's text plus, you know in text what do you have like the, T-H-E, and then you have, and plus part has like opening and closing brackets and symbols that are created in the language to mean certain things. So HTML is a markup language, hypertext markup language. Hypertext is text that can do more than just sit there, I guess, is another question. Or it has multiple meanings depending upon the context of using it. Uh, preprocessor? Or what, what is what? <coughs> Say that one more time. Script language is not a compiled language. Most of the languages on the internet are script, uh, which means it's written in text. And it's in a text file, and you upload the text file to the server. They call them generically scripts, like programs. It's a program. It's usually compiled, like written in C or Java. If you're in the Java class, we're writing programs. It's compiled code. JavaScript is a scripting version of a language. It's not Java, it's a completely different language. But it's scripting. PHP is also scripting. Um, because it's... Um, you write lines of code and you can put other languages in the same file. And it, you can see it's in a text file. Um, PHP runs from a server. JavaScript is a scripting language that runs from a client. The web browser interprets JavaScript. The server, Apache server, interprets PHP. So it's, it's, it's interesting. It, both of those two languages actually work with HTML. So syntax draws upon C, Java, Perl. See, pretty, fairly easy to learn. Most commonly used inside of web servers to parse pages for dynamic content and to run database commands and to connect with databases. It differs from JavaScript in that it runs from a server. It doesn't run on the client's computer. If, you, if it runs on the client's computer, what's wrong? Just wondering, is it HTML? HTML? XML. XML. Ah, there's a big difference between XML and HTML. XML marks up data, and it defines data. HTML marks up text, just like H, uh, PHP uses hypertext. So HTML stands for hypertext markup language. 
which is what the, the H stands for the same thing in PHP as it does in HTML. XML plus HTML turns into XHTML. That's XML plus HTML all together in the same file following a different standard, following more standardization. HTML, you can write really sloppy HTML code. In fact, everything's HTML if you think about it. I mean, it's it's pretty simple to write and it's very forgiving. Uh, but it's hard to get it to look good sometimes. Um, XML, if you were to define and send data from computer to computer, you use XML as a language to say this is the first name, this is the last name, this is the address. Tags are used very similar to HTML, but it's used to define the data instead of the text, attributes to the text. HTML makes things bold and in color and allows you to put an image in and to use multimedia, especially HTML5 has a bunch of stuff in there for embedded iframes and things, which allow you to put video and a web page and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, okay, so normal HTML document requires only a web browser to read it, and it can be read offline or online, it transferred back and forth between a port called HTTP. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transport Protocol. It's what sends the HTML text back and forth from the server to the client and vice versa. So it's a protocol. Protocols are rules. And the rules are defined inside of Apache. In fact, this Apache that we're running here is the same Apache that you would go and see like 99.9% .9 of all websites are using Apache. So. A PHP document is a text document that has everything written inside of it. So in order to correctly read it, um, you actually have to go through and have it parsed by a PHP server utility that reads the script, extracts the PHP code, runs it. Could you guys take your com could you guys could you take your conversation outside, please? Yeah, it's 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 even bothering me. And I'm not even sitting that close to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, the PHP code gets extracted out of the file, gets interpreted by a server, and then gets sent to the client. So the server processes everything for PHP. The browser processes the HTML document. So here's sort of like what it looks like in terms of a simple transfer of normal HTML code. You load it into your web server. This would be your Apache, as an example, and uh, application server. And uh, your HTML file would be inside of it. And then and this is your computer. This is your Internet Explorer, your Firefox, or whatever. And it gets actually sent over through HTTP protocol, and it gets interpreted on the client side. If you're going to use PHP, you have a PHP parsing engine. This is where MySQL is, by the way, as well. We're using MySQL in this class. It sits right here, right behind the web server, inside of the web server, I should say. And the pages are sent back and forth from server to client via the HTTP protocol. So it's kind of a bigger architectural picture of it. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it, server client. So when you hear the word server, it's really another computer that you're connecting to. In fact, when you guys log on to the internet, you're connecting to a server. You're going through an access point through a router, and that router is going to a server that's giving you connectivity. Well, the router is actually doing the doing the server connectivity for you. Uh, but you could, uh, let's say for example, um, you could have a service provider like AT&T or something. And then you have like, they, sometimes they give you web space. Because you're connected to the server, sometimes you get like location where you can stick stuff. You can FTP back and forth. Uh, in fact, this XAMPP is a mini server that you've installed on your computer that you can use. Just like a web server, actually. We just used it as a web server a few minutes ago with PHP uh, to write applications and to test them. It's a great platform for development. And then you just take your files and you upload them to another server. And then, hey, you have the real application that's live, available to the world. So, Which is the same thing we have with my, my uh, MySQL, with the database program. So here's what your PHP code looks like. It looks like this. This is an opening and a closing HTML tag, and here's the red part is the PHP code. So you have this like arrow with a question mark, and it says PHP. You can actually leave out the words PHP, 
and just use an arrow with a question mark. This is a start tag, this is an end tag. Everything you put in the middle is your PHP syntax, your PHP code. Everything else outside of that is HTML. So this is an HTML document with PHP code stuck inside of it. Echo is just going to print something to the screen. Echo just puts it out. If I were to run this, actually, let's just see real quick. Watch this. If I were to run this, I'd take it, copy it, put it into a text file. Uh, let's just call this one uh, Hello World. Uh, I'm going to put it on the desktop first. I want to put a PHP extension on it too, so I'm going to call this Hello hello.php if I were to run it from outside of the server, right now it's on my desktop if I were to run it outside of the server, here it is right here actually it looks like, well, it's not attached to my web browser. If I were to open it up in a web browser, let's see if I can do that, open with Firefox uh, it doesn't recognize it <laughs> because the browsers can't interpret it so instead, I'm going to copy it into my htdocs folder in my web server. And I'm going to call it from localhost. So I'm going to run it from inside of my web server. If I do that, I'm just going to come up here. Instead of form.html, I'm going to run hello. Hello.php. Oops, and you see I have a parse error. It's running it, though, this time at least. But this time it's telling me I have a parse error. Uh, what did I do here? On line 4 of hello.php, so let's see what happened here. Open with text editor. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, it's these little, it's these little uh, opening and closing uh, parentheses. They ended up not having that. In fact, I'm going to take this out too, so you can kind of sort of see. It was my, uh, oh, here, I'll put it in here. Let me put that back. I shouldn't show you sloppy code. You should put the PHP in there. <laughs> it was complaining about this line here uh, because the when I cut and pasted it from the PowerPoint, it didn't recognize the font of the quote, so I just backspaced over and replaced the quote. So now if I save it, it should print out just fine. That's actually a common problem that you might have when uh, when you cut and paste from like PowerPoint stuff. Now it works. Hello world. Um, I can put in other stuff in here as well um, and I can put other HTML stuff in there so just to show you something really the difference here so if I were using HTML I could go like B for bold this is bold and I have a start and I have an end tag that makes something bold and then if I wanted to put more PHP code in here I just like this we don't know too much PHP code, which is what this lecture is about. Let's go here, echo uh, some statement in red. Let's do that. And then inside, I can print out from the echo command, I can print out like this. I can go font color equals red. and then put a semicolon at the end of the line. So now I've mixed in PHP code with HTML code because what this is going to do is just going to echo out this text. Actually, here, let's I'm going to take this quote off of here and just going to do it this way because those quotes are going to cause a problem. I can do single quotes like that if I want to because the quotes are on the beginning and the end, but I'm just going to leave the quotes out. So now if I run this, it's going to look a little different. I'm just going to refresh the page over here. And I have a syntax error. I have syntax error in line 11. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, probably because I have a closing tag here. Oops, you know why? I didn't close, I didn't close my PHP code. Here, I'll stick it on here. There we go. You have an opening bracket, opening statement, and a closing statement from the PHP code. I didn't close it. 
so that's why I had that error message. Now it should work. Let's see. Unfortunately, when you go to test, you don't get anything more than uh, some weird cryptic message that prints to the screen. <laughs> Gives you a line number. So, so you see that uh, it says hello world. This is bold. Some statement in red. So I've mixed and matched to the HTML code with the PHP code. So PHP works quite well that way. And then I can put a command in there to connect to the database and send some stuff to the database or read some stuff from the database, which is what I get here. And uh, this one here that says database.php. This one runs a query on the database. And it's a little higher level example. I'm going to show you some few statements in a few minutes. I kind of make it look a little easier for you, but it's just going to run a query on the database, and then it's going to print out the example. Uh, print, so it's supposed to say echo table, and while there's there's uh, results back from the result set of the query we ran, for each one of them, we're going to print it out onto the screen in a table. This one's called database. It's also in the downloaded files. So if I come to here and switch this one to database, you see I have it printing out all the contents of the MySQL database. But in here you can kind of see where the HTML code is mixed in with the PHP code and it starts out the same. But this one is not HTML with PHP inside, it's PHP with HTML inside. So I flipped it around backwards. And then uh, there's another script in here you might want to look at. It's called insert. And insert defines the server, the username, the password. And it simply inserts into my guess a username, password. This is going to put Peter Pan in there. So if I run it, I run it this way. I just type insert in here. So without using the form, Insert's just going to put Peter Pan in there for as many times as I run it. So I ran it twice. So if I run back, go back to database. Now I got Peter Pan in there twice because the script just put it in there for me. So usually what you're going to do is create a form, take the information from a form, add it to the database, which is how you would do that, how you would accomplish that. So, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. So you see you've got these opening and closing brackets. They're used to, they're tags actually. They're tags that denote that you're putting in PHP code. You can put JavaScript in here as well. It doesn't always have to have just PHP code in there. And so the PHP code gets parsed and then the output that actually goes to the browser look, look, looks like what's on the right from the left. So the word world, not really in blue and this isn't really red. But for illustrative purposes, the, this code gets translated into the word world, and it gets inserted into the text. So echo is your first command most people learn. It's kind of like how you do hello world. Echo hello world. Uh, echo just prints something to the screen. So echo hello results in hello. Or echo I love PHP. You get, I love PHP printed to the screen. So it's a string. Everything's a string. <laughs> That's the cool thing. Numbers are strings. Names are strings. Everything's text or a string because that's what you're putting in a text browser. It's just text and that's how HTML actually works with it. So a string is a sequence of characters. It also includes a sequence of non-characters or numbers or symbols and things. So hi, I love PHP 5 and something that's empty is a string. They're all examples of strings. Everything's a string. <laughs> And if it's not a string, you have to parse it to something else. It's kind of like JavaScript, where you parse it to an integer, parse it to a float. So you take the string and you, you, you put it into something else. You change it into something else if you want to use like a number for addition or something. Um, so saying that uh, five is not the same as just saying five. So if you make the string with quotes, it's different than if you just say five. Five is five. So let's do some examples in a few minutes, but just like HTML is processed sequentially in order, so line by line. So it says hello world, it's going to print out hello world, one right after the other, because we didn't put any line returns or anything in here, it just goes one after the other. 
Here's some more general syntax for you. And there's a semicolon that goes at the end of every line. Now when you start, well, if you've learned, if you're in the Java class, we put a semicolon at the end of every line too. It's pretty standard for C, for Java, for most scripting as well as compiled languages. So echo five puts five to the screen, but it treats it like a number. So it's because PHP can convert a number to a string automatically. So if it's not a string, it's a number. If you don't put the quotes around it, it turns into a number. By default, it's a string. <laughs> so. here's, some other, here's some more numbers or some data types. And you don't actually have to specify a type. The type gets automatically assigned. So it turns into a string if you use quotes. You don't use the quotes. It gets used as a number. So it's kind of flexible that way. You don't have to know all the data types. In fact, uh, most time you're probably not going to specify or even think about the data type. But we can do some simple math with PHP. Here we can take 1 plus 1 and it will print out 2. So this will say, because echo is the first line, if I add 1 to 1, it's, and then echo 1 plus 1. So because this doesn't have any quotes around it, it will be treated like a number. And so this will print out 2. And the brackets here will go away. So echoes 1 plus 1, which means take 1 and add it to 1. We get 2. <laughs> Heavy math. So we can go like 8 times 10, get 80. So you can see where it says uh, string, a string, and then uh, echo out a number. You can mix and match numbers with strings and stuff. Because you might go to have some like date of birth or something and you have to use a date format. Or maybe you want to figure out somebody's age by taking a number a year and subtracting another year from it. Um, or maybe you want to do a sum or a count or something of the data that's in the database. Also supports string concatenation. It uses a dot for that. So here the big old dot it does concatenation. So here's 5 plus 5 is dot 5 plus 5. She can give you 10. So. And here's another example um, where it says, uh, you know, here's a concatenation with PHP can do math and another concatenation with a number. So concatenation is just used by a dot and it just adds the sentences together. Because well, if you want to do them in subparts because you want to do like maybe a calculation or you want to like take the results from one table and the results from another table and put them together, concatenate rows to rows or something. It supports comments, so you can put comments in the code with the, the two forward slashes. It tells it to ignore the rest of the line. So it says, I love PHP with two lines here. I can't add. Huh? Yeah, you can. I can't add. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's another comment. It doesn't get printed to the screen. It also supports the C, C++. Well, it's actually C, not C++, this, this type of commenting as well, with the, the forward slash and the asterisk. So it'll do uh, start and end. It, basically, that allows you to go over multiple lines. So this one here is a single line till the rest of the line. Just, it's only this part, this comment. Here we start it and we end it, and everything in between ends up as part of it. We have variables. Variables, this is a funny thing too, variables always start out with a dollar sign. It's like, you get money for creating variables? So, I don't know. So dollar sign foo, in this case, is equal to 5 plus 5, so foo is equal to 10. And then dollar sign bar is equal to foo plus 5, so now bar is equal to 15. So, which is actually kind of cool. It'll take and substitute it in. So if you want to use a variable, you always have to start it out with a dollar sign, um, which is different. So, and you have to start out with a number, with, excuse me, with a character. It can't start out with a number or a symbol. Uh, excuse me, it can start out with a symbol, like the underscore, but it can't start out with a number. So this one here with the five first is not valid. Uh, this one is valid, but it's not equal because it's also case sensitive. So the language is case sensitive. It's very symbol oriented. Well, just think about the question mark and the arrow to start and end it. It's very symbol oriented. And then um, you have your dollar signs for all your variables. Here's some reserved names uh, because PHP runs on a server. 
and it can pick out environment variables from the server. So you can get the home directory, you can get the database directory, uh, globals, um, you can use HTTP protocol commands and things that are on the server. So it interfaces well with other server technologies. So some of the reserved names, usually they're all in caps, but for files, for environment, for session information and stuff. So you can do uh, uh, variables with variables. You can do a variable assignment. So foo plus plus increases uh, by one. Foo plus equals two. If you're familiar with C, it's a programming language, or even Java, actually, um, all the variable stuff you do in those languages, you can do in PHP. So PHP is a language, it's a scripting language. It's a little easier to program in than Java. It's just for web development. It runs on a server. You have to install a PHP parser for it. PHP interpreter. Uh, if you have that installed, most web servers you get so have it installed already. So if you've ever looked at uh, getting web space, like from GoDaddy or something, it'll tell you, you know, if you want a Unix or do you want a Windows account, you say Unix. It says, well, here you go. You have PHP version such and such. Okay. And you have MySQL database. You can do it for five databases. You can do, you know, we have, we're supporting PHP 5 and 6 or something. So it usually tells you what you're getting. And then it usually comes in combination because people who do website development like to use them together. So. Hopefully, maybe one of these days we'll do a PHP or website class here, uh, which would be a nice extension on this class. Um, so, some more uses for variables. Uh, you can use variables and functions as functions. You can use variables uh, with functions. You can use it with other variables. So here we have uh, dollar sign foo is equal to five. Five foo is foo. So inside of the function echo, it's to say foo is equal to, is the same thing as saying foo is equal to five, foo is equal to foo dot concatenate five. So it'll show five. So, so this program here takes foo is equal to five, foo plus plus, well now foo is equal to six. Now foo is equal to foo, well it's six, foo is equal to six. Or uh, bar is equal to one, uppercase bar. Two separate variables, by the way. Lowercase bar is equal to two. Bar is equal to bar. Well, bar is equal to one. So remembering that uh, variables are case sensitive. You're going to have two variables with the same name. One's uppercase and one's lowercase. And you're going to assign two different values to them. A little bit about the plus plus. It works the same as C++ in Java. If you put it before the variable, it increments, then prints the variable. If you put it after the variable, it reads the variable value, then increments it second. So it's kind of interesting the way that works. You don't really need to know that when you first start out. But occasionally you might want to print a value to something and then increment it, or print the value after you've incremented it. So these programs, uh, the first one's going to get a parse error, because you're starting the variables out with a number. So it's not really a fair question. The second one is A is equal to 1, B is equal to A plus plus, B is equal to B, well B is equal to 1, because B is equal to A plus plus, well you plus plus it after you read it, so B is going to be equal to A. So you put the plus plus before, then it's going to be equal to 2. So it's just showing you the order in which you're incrementing the variable, depends, or affects the value of the variable equal plus plus after versus plus plus before. So. Also conditionals. So if you're taking the Java class, you're familiar with it. If, then, else. Hopefully you are, because tomorrow you'll be testing on it. Uh, so if condition, there's a opening and closing curly bracket with a result in there. And we have the equality, the not equal, the greater than, the less than, stuff like that. So here we have variable uh, bar is equal to 2. If bar is equal to 2 which it is, actually, in this case, it's going to come out true. Echo bar is 2. Yay! Uh, so it displays this here. So it's kind of simple now, actually. That you've taken the Java class, probably, hopefully. Uh, here we have uh, foo is equal to 3, bar is equal to 300. If foo is larger than bar, uh, hmm, no, it's not. Uh, it displays nothing. So you could put an else in there. So. Uh, you have the opening and closing brackets. If you leave out the opening and closing brackets, it does one line. 
Same rule actually with Java and C++. So you can admit the opening and closing brackets if you only have one command. So here we have uh, if foo uh, doesn't equal 2, well foo equals 2, then print out foo is not 2. But foo is still not 2, it's going to be print out because you have more than one line. So make sure you put the curly brackets in uh, if you have more than one line. That way uh, it'll keep it as a grouping instead of just one line. Uh, else, in fact, this code looks exactly like Java. So if you've taken the Java programming class, that's tomorrow, the syntax for PHP is identical. <laughs> Conditionals, the do's, the while's, the case, the switch, the um, if statement, everything's the same. Uh, so once you learn like a language like Java, which you can actually go back now and apply the same concept to C and C++, it's the same syntax. So it's, it's kind of interesting how the languages are pretty much all the same. You either know how to program or you don't know how to program <laughs> one or the other. Because if you know one language, you can pr pretty much pick up another one quite easily. So here's the uh, if with the else. Another example without the curly brackets. And uh, this one has the curly brackets in it. You more commonly see it with the curly brackets. It's more Java-like. You can actually leave out the curly brackets with uh, Java as well. You don't need it for Java. Arrays are interesting. So arrays in PHP are associative arrays and key value combinations, uh, which is the, what you're getting. You're actually getting an, an associate array when you query a MySQL database. Because you're getting first name in the name, last name in the name email address and the, the value. Um, so the key leads to a value. You can mix and match different values in different arrays. So because of the strong support for arrays and the mixing and the key value associative quality, this is why I think it's popular with MySQL. Because what you get in MySQL is a bunch of columns with a bunch of values. So it's nice to be able to store it in the same similar data type. So here's an array with a key foo and a value bar. They're both strings. Here's a comma separating it. And then we have another array value, which a key is 12, the value is true. And then uh, if we echo it out, we echo it out using the value, the key, and we get the value that gets printed out. So if we print out foo, we get bar. If we print out 12, we get true. So. <coughs> And arrays are just like variables. <coughs> you just have more of them. So. And you can mix and match them. So in languages like Java, you can't mix and match array elements. They have to all be of the same data type. In uh, PHP, they can be of various different data types. So here's some more array examples. You can delete quite easily. You can unset. So you run a command on the array to delete an item in the array. Um, where in other languages, you just make it zero, empty out array and elements. So here you can actually run an unset method to delete an item. We have auto numbering that occurs as well. If you don't want to specify out the next item, you can actually use them like C or C++ or Java arrays and have the auto increment, the indexes from zero to how many elements you have in there. Or start out with some elements and then have it continue Uh, let's see, uh, supports forms. So here's an example of the form. We looked at another form. We looked at the form, actually, it took the first name, last name, and email address in, and then ran ran a script. So here's, a, here's how it's being used here, another example of it, where we have the action is test.php, and it the name of the form is test form. The method is a get. So this you'll learn from an HTML course, actually. This is an HTML form. But you see, we put the name of the file in here. We take the PHP code, we copy it, stick it, or write it in a text file. Name it with a .php extension. Put it in the same folder, htdocs, as the rest of the files. And then we just run it from the form. So it's a fairly easy way to kind of put the pieces together. Press the Go button, it runs the script. This post and this get is actually coming from HTML. This is how those variables are being sent back and forth that comes from the form. It's actually an HTTP, HTTP protocol set of commands, the post and the get. I'd say the first time you take a web development class, you'll, you'll see a lot of that in action. 
Um, and at one point, you'll forget what post and get means. You'll just use it like it works. And pe most people don't really think about it. it's a separate protocol. But, um, to get something, you just get the values from the form. To post, it actually means to pull it out of the memory and assign it to something. So we used a web server in this class, and it was called Apache. And uh, we have PHP in it. We have Perl in it. And you're probably never going to use Perl in your entire career. Perl's kind of an old Unix language. But we saw MySQL in there. So a few words about what this Apache server actually is, and what the actual server does. And we saw the pictures earlier in this lecture showing the separation between the client and the server. Um, it allows you to kind of use HTTP, and it allows you to transfer files back and forth, images, database results. Um, it's really used for a lot of, well, it's actually the core foundation for web development. This is this Apache. So it provides a multiple process handling. So from an operating system perspective, Apache is kind of like a separate operating system installed on top of an operating system. But it's one for web connectivity or server connectivity. So when you run Java, as an example, you're running a JVM, you have a Java operating system, a Java virtual machine running on top of your operating system, it allows you to share the same .class file or the .code on any computer. You just load up the JVM and it runs. Well, Apache is sort of the equivalent to that. It's the server that's running on your Unix box or something or on your server. Actually, in this case, it's running on my MacBook inside of XAMPP. And it's providing the connectivity to the users, not well, just me. If I wanted to open up a port, I could connect to it from the outside. It's the same stripped down version, but it's the same server that I would get on a hosting provider when I uh, would to sign up, let's say, for a server account or web development. If you want to know more about Apache, I would just basically Google it. Um, Apache is kind of one of those technologies that uh, changes through time. So does PHP, actually. There's a couple of different versions of PHP. Um, they're not all compatible with each other, which is why when you go to sign up for one of those web accounts, it'll ask you or it'll tell you which versions of PHP are available. And when you're configuring your application to run, you can say, hey, use PHP 5 or you use PHP 4 or something. Um, it's an open source language, which means it's freely developed, which means there's no standard, there's no compatibility back and forth. Um, it's called the same thing, but each version of PHP is slightly different, which is weird. And each version of Apache is actually slightly different as well. Um, so you'll run into those things when you, uh, when you start taking a web development class. So I just wanted to introduce the language to you because uh, it has some pretty strong connections with MySQL. And we used MySQL in this class. So I'm going to stop this recording.